Okay. Thanks everybody um, for joining us today. Welcome to today's OER at TDL meeting, um, which is focused on planning your academic calendar for OER. My name is Christy Park. I use she, her pronouns. I'm the executive director of the Texas Digital Library, and I'm really delighted to be joining this meeting from Austin today. I invite all of you to say hello and introduce yourselves. Tell us where you're joining from in chat as we kind of proceed with a little bit of housekeeping. So just some reminders to keep your microphones muted if you aren't speaking um, during the meeting today. We love to see your faces, so feel free to keep your video unmuted if you'd like to, but um, if you aren't really having a ready for video kind of day, that's okay too. We hope you'll use the chat box to make comments and share resources throughout today's presentations. And that's also where we'll be sharing out a few links to resources that we discuss. And if you have any questions, you can type them in chat at any time. We'll have lots of time in the meeting today for questions and discussion. In fact, we hope this will be a rich and uh, very interactive uh, meeting today where we'll hear from all of you your questions, but also your experiences. We do have live captioning available, and you can view it by clicking on the closed caption button on your Zoom toolbar. And finally, um, as I mentioned, the first part of this meeting it will be recorded. We're gonna share out that recording from our website um, and with everybody in attendance here today. We will stop recording after uh, Sabrina and Gabby finish their presentations just to provide an opportunity for more candid and open conversation and discussion. We at TDL ask that you be excellent to each other during this meeting today. We are dedicated to providing an experience that's free from harassment and inclusive of everybody. And so we ask you all to be considerate and respectful in speech and action, to attempt understanding before conflict, to refrain from demeaning, discriminatory, or harassing behavior and speech, and to be mindful of your environment. Um, and of your fellow participants. We also very much encourage laughing and smiling and asking questions at any time. And as I mentioned, we're gonna have lots of time after the presentations for questions and discussion. All right, finally, um, TDL is so grateful to our members, many of whom are represented here um, in attendance today, who put your trust in TDL to provide essential library infrastructure and services um, for managing your work in, in SCALCOM, open education, and digital collections. TDL is a consortial member of the Open Education Network, which extends a multitude of benefits to our members. Um, you can learn about some of those on our website, and I'm going to paste a link in chat here in a second where you can learn more about that. We have some additional plans in the works for our TDL OER community, and we're going to be making some announcements about those plans in the next month or two. So if you want to stay informed, and I think you do, about all that's going on in the TDL OER world, um, make sure you're subscribed to the TDL OER email list. I'm gonna put a link in chat where you can subscribe to that list, or you can just email us at info at tdl.org um, and we'll be happy to add you. Let me go ahead and put those in chat. All right. So now uh, what, we're, what we're all here for. Um, I wanna thank today's presenters for allowing us to learn from their experiences today. They are Sabrina Davis from Texas Tech University and Gabrielle Hernandez from UT Rio Grande Valley. They are gonna share some of their experiences with um, scheduling and tracking OER work through the out there academic calendars. 
Um, but as I said, we want this to be interactive. We really want to hear from you all about what your experiences and challenges are in this area as well. So I'm going to hand it over to them for brief presentations, and then um, uh, we'll have lots of time for discussion. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen and hand it over to the first presenter. Hi, everybody. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Yay for allergy season. Hi, everybody. My name is Gabby Hernandez. I'm the Open Education Librarian at the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. And I'm so excited to see all of y'all here and all of your friendly faces. I feel like this is like home with all of our OER Texas people. And um, I'm going to start us off a little bit today with some information about myself and our session. So guys, let me tell you, I love calendars <laughs> and all of my friends know me as calendar queen because I, I write everything down. Um, I once had one of my fellow teachers tell me that if they ever got in trouble with the law, that they would call me first because her alibi would be in my calendar. So um, my friends and coworkers have also tried to get themselves a calendar because they like they like it, they like what I do and they want to try it as well. But they always tell me they could never quite keep up with it and wondered like what I did to be able to do so. And so what I always tell them is you have to first know what you want your calendar to do for you before you decide to go actually shopping for one. And every job I've had has required a different type of calendar. So from teaching to traveling through grad school and librarianship, each of my calendars has been a little bit different because my activities and goals and objectives require different things. So like as an educator, I was in the daily grind. Um, every day was unique and presented its own challenges. And my calendar reflected this by having a section every day to document what was happening in my classroom and what needed to happen. Um, I thought three weeks at a time, you know, the progress report and then report card and then progress report and report card. And so that was how I framed my information in my calendar. And then traveling, I needed something that was small that could track how long I had been in certain countries to ensure I did not overstay my welcome. And so for this, I went with a pocket calendar, you know, something that was easy to store and just kind of jot a few things down. As an open education librarian, I work um, on a semester and a yearly basis. So I need something that will show me like more of an overview of my program and my deadlines. So in this line of work, I work best with like a yearly calendar. And I share this with you because before you go to the store and get sidetracked or possibly overwhelmed by all the like patterns and shapes and formats and colors of a calendar that can get really exciting, first think about like what you or your program needs. Are you a day-to-day -day person or do you need something more like a little bit back, a little bit broader? And once you start answering those questions for yourself, then you can find something that works with you instead of it being something external that you have to keep up with. So Sabrina and I are going to tell you a little bit about where we are in our programs and what we need and how we organize and plan our academic year in hopes to set us up for success. So Sabrina. Awesome. Thanks, Gabby. Um, so as Gabby and I were talking and trying to like plan out this presentation, we realized that number one, our institutions are, are different, right? Um, not only are they in vastly different parts of the state of Texas, so, you know, different students and just different needs for the institutions, um, but they're slightly different sizes. Um, and, and the level of support um, that we have as open, open education or OER librarians is also slightly different um, at our campuses. Um, the other thing is that our programs are also at very different stages as far as like where we're at in our OER journey at each of our institutions. Um, so a little bit of background about where we're at here at Texas Tech and Gabby will go into where she's at. Um, so I've been at Texas Tech for almost two years now, it'll be two, uh, two years later this month. Um, before my role uh, of OER librarian was created, um, there were scholarly communications type of roles that existed in the library, um, but there wasn't someone that was like their whole job was OER. 
Um, so there was some work happening with OER, but, you know, because it was kind of one of those, it was tacked on, you know, to a million other things these people were doing. I'm sure many of you guys can, can sympathize and empathize with that. Um, you know, they just didn't get as far as I think they had wanted. Um, so my job was created as solely OER. That's what I do. OER every day. I love it. Um, <laughs> and that was created in 2021. Um, and we are still very much at kind of like the beginning-ish end of our journey. Um, so when I first started my job, I thought two years ahead. Um, I was like, okay, I, I have my end goal of like what I want OER to be. Like my pie in the sky dream was I want all core curriculum courses at Texas Tech to be using OER. It's a great dream. I love it. Um, but I had to think about, you know, how was I going to get there? What steps did I need to take? Um, and so I created an OER plan for Texas Tech. Um, and this is this is what it looked like. So I made this uh, within the first two weeks <laughs> that I was here at Texas Tech. Um, you know, I did a lot of research and a lot of reading um, about other programs, uh, OER programs that existed at other institutions, both in Texas and around Texas or outside of Texas. Um, if you've not read the uh, OER for or OER Starter Kit by Abby Elder, highly recommend um, that book. Literally changed my life um, and helped me kind of get a jump start on what I was going to be doing uh, here at Texas Tech and kind of gave me some questions and things to think about. So going back to this document, I kind of thought semesters ahead, right? So I had two years and I was like, okay, what am I going to do each semester um, in those two years to kind of get where I needed to be? Um, and I did exclude the summer months just because those are a little bit crazy and a little weird for everybody. So I did it in phases and I initially actually started with outcomes, which are down here. So I put, what did I want my bigger outcomes to be for each, each semester? So that's where I started. Um, at first, it was all about just building infrastructure, um, you know, creating a mission vision statement, uh, you know, thinking of values <laughs> for the, what the OER office here in the library could become. Um, and then creating various like marketing kind of foundations. So like we have a logo and I love it. Um, and, and just things like that to kind of get started. And I just went semester by semester. So again, very, very big picture. Um, but I quickly realized at eh, right here, middle of, middle of phase two, phase three, um, after about a year or so doing my job and I would kind of figured out what I wanted to do and how like this was all going to work and what I was doing, that this was too broad. <laughs> um, you know, many of you that, that work in this OER world, you've got a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of projects. Um, I, I, I think a lot of us are like the ultimate project managers in, in so many ways. There's so many moving pieces and things happening all at the same time. Um, so after talking to many of my OER colleagues uh, here in Texas, and Gabby was actually one of them, um, I adapted from her, and I think she's going to show you what she has later, um, this Excel sheet. This thing literally also kind of a lifesaver and keeps me on track. So this is all of the annual OER events um, or activities that we do here at Texas Tech. Um, so like no matter what, everything on here is going to happen every single year. Um, so we've got, you know, everything planned out month by month. Um, the semesters are color coordinated, which helps me. And we start with August and then go through July. Um, one thing I don't do on mine, and I'm not sure if Gabby does this on hers, um, is I don't include dates um, for this uh, just because life happens and I do want to kind of like give myself a little bit of wiggle room um, and, and just kind of grace, you know, like that way if for some reason I, I you know, put a date on here and I don't 
get this task done by that date, um, I'm not going to be as hard on myself. Um, so I do leave it a little bit open just to provide some flexibility for, you know, also anything else that could come up, you know, like a random meeting with a faculty member who wants a consultation or, or things like that. Um, so for us, this is, this is kind of where we're at. We're very much at an outreach kind of stage um, in, in our calendar and in, in our OER program here at Texas Tech. Um, we're slowly starting to see like adoptions and more faculty um, embracing OER, but not as many as we'd like, and that's okay, because we're, we're going to get there. Um, so right now for us, it's been really all about these annual OER events. Um, so beyond this beautiful Excel sheet, um, these colors actually mean something. Um, I love cool, cool tones. Um, it's just, it's just my vibe. Um, but these colors actually correspond to what I put in my Outlook calendar to also kind of keep me on track. So I've started my September uh, for this year uh, calendar. And this is kind of what it looks like. This is not all of my stuff. This is just the OER annual things that I've got I've got shown. Um, but as I said, each of these kind of correspond to a color. And what I do is on each of these, I put, I make it so the names match what was on here. And then if I just click on it, it gives me a little description of what I need to do. Um, now, when I am selecting dates, I try to kind of think about um, what's happening, <laughs> like within the month and just kind of like general kinds of things. So like, when I want to, you know, try to get uh, schedule a meeting with Faculty Senate, for example, I need to do that really early on. Um, for any of you that have tried to get in front of Faculty Senate, it can be very difficult um, to just get on their agendas and get on their calendar because they've got a lot of stuff going on. Um, so I will typically put this at the beginning of the month, just to, you know, it's the first thing I see when I start a new month, and I just remember to do it. Now, let's say I've got, for course markings, um, I need to schedule a, a day to join the Student Senate to kind of talk to them about course markings. But I also talk to them about all of our OER funding that we have available. So I went ahead and put those kind of clumped on the same day. That way they can all just kind of be in an email. Um, and I did, you know, I tend to put them in kind of the middle of the month just because students are busy. They've got a lot going on. It's the start of a new semester. Labor Day happened. Like I wanna give them time. Um, so that is just some stuff that I do keep in mind um, as I'm, you know, selecting dates. The other thing that I try to make sure to do when I'm, doing any of this planning or scheduling um, and why this document is so helpful is, yes, I am alone in the library doing OER work, but so much of what I do depends on other areas on campus um, for me to be successful. And if I want, you know, for them to continue to support what I'm doing and to help me out, um, giving them enough notice <laughs> and allowing them time to plan is also super helpful. So having everything scheduled month by month like this helps me see that. Now, this is where Texas Tech is at so far. Um, we are just now kind of moving into the phase where, you know, we, we are wanting to do more uh, event kinds of things or, or you know, more one-shot kinds of things as opposed to, you know, relying a lot on our outreach annual events. Um, but we're not there yet, so I can't show you that. Uh, and so for that, I'm actually going to turn it over to Gabby to talk about what they're doing at UTRGV. Sabrina, I love it. You took the spreadsheet and you're doing a great job with it. It's so great. I'm so excited. Uh, that makes me, that brings me so much joy. Um, <clears throat> So I, like I said, work at UTRGV. We are a four-year public institution and we're the, one of the largest Hispanic serving institutions in the United States. And we have about 30,000 students. I started in fall 2019 
and uh, I started part-time. And so I worked one full year part-time until I transitioned over to full-time. And I will go ahead and start sharing my screen. So, so when I also started like Sabrina, very outreach focused, it was also part-time. So I had a lot of like time constraints, but I also, what I told myself was, this is what everybody else is doing. Like, I'm lucky that I'm a part-time OER librarian. Everybody else has like another title and they're still able to do OER stuff. Like they're doing research, they're doing all these other stuff. So I took it as like, I'm kind of equal with everybody else because I, I'm doing this part-time. So I also focused a lot on outreach and focused a lot on my daily tasks. And so I created um, a spreadsheet and I'll share this with you. So this is how I thought, this is how like I organized my brain and my process, especially with, yes, I was working part-time, but I was also working part-time in a public library. So it was kind of that thing of like, how do you categorize your brain and like, okay, right now I'm gonna focus on OER because this is my OER time. And then, you know, later I'm gonna focus on this, you know, this other thing. So I was working two different institutions, but it's the same for those of you who have multiple jobs and OER is just kind of tacked on as a piece of your work. So I created this spreadsheet and it kind of, it was a lot of, it looks like a lot, but it was a lot of copy paste. And so I just kind of like kept track of what I was doing and what I felt like I needed to do. But the biggest part for me was not necessarily my daily tasks, but trying to collect the information. We talked a little bit earlier about library school, not necessarily preparing you for the jobs that we end up attaining. And OER is part of that. I had no idea this even existed. So it was like starting from zero and trying to figure out what do I don't, what do I need to know? And what do I don't know that I need to know? And so a lot of the things I did was I just started collecting things. Like I collected webinars, um, conferences, um, archived webinars. Um, and just when I had an idea, I would just like put stuff down somewhere that I could know that I wouldn't lose it. And so like future ideas, so I, it was just like a huge brainstorming document for me that I would keep over and over and kind of look down and go, okay, can I do this? Is this a future thing? Is this a good example, a bad example? Um, so I use this as that kind of collection document of like, where do I keep everything that I want to learn about so I can ensure that I'm, you know, doing the best that I can with my program. And then also during that time, I did the OEN certificate for librarianship. And a part of that uh, is creating an action plan. And within that action plan, you have to create a timeline. And uh, I kind of hear what you say, Sabrina, like when you don't know and you're in this role and you're creating this timeline, um, so this is what you know I thought I was going to do and a lot of this never actually happened but it was nice to just kind of think about what could you possibly do and what are some areas that you want to develop or you know dream job this is what it would look like um, and so that's how we started but then as I began working full time and more projects were put on my plate and um you know, I was in charge of funding and at the time it was also COVID. And so we were working remote and this is a problem that a lot of libraries didn't have at the time, but our university had extra funds and they were like, we need to use these or else we're gonna lose them. And so I was like, give them to me, I'll use it. And so it was, you know, taking on the role of utilizing the funds that we already had and then using these other new funds, creating new professional development out, um, outreaches and things of that nature. And what's different about my institution um, is that we have our funding based on a fiscal year. So it's semester by semester. And if I don't use it, I lose it. And so then I had to rethink about how do I organize myself based off of that funding. And so that's where this sheet came out that Sabrina has like totally making it super deluxe. Um, and that's where this came. It was like, okay, I know that I have to get all of these funds spent in this semester and then do it again the next semester. And I don't wanna lose it. I don't ever wanna have extra funds left over because I wanna make the case that 
we need more. And if I'm not using it, I can't make the case that I, I need more. So I started with this and just that, again, like Sabrina was saying, organizing them, categorizing, like what are our projects and what is the rec what do we need to do for each of those? Um, and I kind of created two different views. And so again, this is kind of like my growing in over, over the years, realizing what I needed. And so I tried this as well, kind of looking at it, you know, instead of looking at it by uh, project, I was like, well, I want to see what it looks like. What are all the things I need to do in August? What is everything I need to do in September? And I didn't quite love either of these. So what I decided to do is, like Sabrina, put it in an Outlook calendar. <clears throat> and what I've done with this Outlook calendar is the same as Sabrina, is color-coded. We love colors. Uh, it helps me organize my brain and see, like, at a glance, all the different things I need to do. But what I did with this calendar is you can see everything is repeating. So I just looked at everything at a month. And these aren't the exact dates where I'll, I'll do these things, but I put it as a forever recurring. So I know these are about the dates that I did this. This is about the time I need to start thinking about, you know, reaching out to affordability advocates, sending our affordable textbook adoption, um, looking at OEN reviews, call for applications. Like I just took all of those projects and took that calendar, which was this one, and I put it in a in a in a shared Skullcom calendar. So that way all of the people in Skullcom are aware of what's going on. So I'm not kind of working by myself in a bubble. You know, everybody has an idea of where we are in our program and what needs to get done. And that way if somebody needs to help or if I'm out, I, you know, everybody has that knowledge and information to be like, oh, I need help with this or oh, my calendar looks really full with this. And so being able to collaborate and have it open that way. And so every month I look at that Outlook calendar and I actually place the date where they need to be. So like October is really busy for us. And so, uh, you know, this is on a Sunday, you know, I'm probably not going to do this on a Sunday, but I can look at it and I know it's already there. So next fall, I have the information there and continuing and, you know, I can add and change as need be. So, um, what else? Tools to keep track um, that I've done over the over these couple of years. I've tried my hand both digital tracking and tracking on paper. I love paper. I like the writing. I like the highlighting because for me it feels like I'm actually getting it done and I can help remember it. Um, so I've tried both keeping track digitally, like on to do, like checklists. I love checklists. Um, I've also done writing things out on in a notebook and just highlighting like these are the things I've done, these are the things I'm going to do next week. Um, and also doing things like on a paper calendar. So I, I have found over the years, I've tried fully digital, I've tried fully paper, and I found the best thing for me is kind of a hybrid of both. So I have my digital calendar that's shared with everybody in Skullcom so we can all be on the same page, but then I also have my personal paper calendar that I, you know, keep a track of my to do list and and all of that. So um, that's where we are. I overall, I feel and I believe it's very important for us to take time out of our day to do these things to make the calendar figure out if it's working for you analyze your calendar. Um, and also to help assess your workload. I, you know, when I'm writing out my to-do list, I'm like, I generally stay in about a page and a half in a week of things I need to do. But then there are weeks where it's like, why is it three pages long? Like, why are there so many things to do? Or like, on the other hand, maybe it's only a half page. And then I can say, oh, great. This is the time where I can do some of those projects that I haven't been able to get to. So it gives me that ability to physically see what my workload is um, and just make sure you find what works best for you. I It can be super elaborate, it can be digital, it can be paper, but like again going back to what I said in the beginning, before you even begin to think about how you're going to plan your academic year, think about what you need out of that academic year and then start planning and making the resources that fit with those objectives and those goals. 
And um, I also like to think about our, our work is really hard to quantify sometimes because we're very project based or like we say we're reaching out to faculty or we say we're doing these things. Um, so having a calendar or a list not only helps you stay organized, but also helps you advocate for yourself and all the work that you're doing. And you can physically be like, look at all the things I did in a week and even for yourself to help you remember like, oh, this is why I'm tired and it's okay to like take a small break this week because you've done a lot and you continue to do a lot. Um, and that's really hard to do with our project-based work that doesn't always have like, you know, a weekly summary every week or something to show for it. So it's something that you can use as your advocacy tool for yourself of how much work you're putting in to this role. So with that, um, we hope that you got some ideas, but also we want to hear from you. Like Sabrina and I had a small chat session and we were able to share our calendars and now it's really helping Sabrina. But y'all also have so many different minds and so many different tools that you're using. And so we're hoping that you would also share with us some of the tools that you use or um, any questions you have or things you may want to see that we do. Anything else? Awesome. Thanks, Gabby and Sabrina. I'm just popping in to say I'm going to stop recording the session so we can start our discussion.